So Blues got their first win of the season. Well, I say first win of the season, first win under Wayne Rooney. It feels like our first win of the season because it's such a long time since uh, Rooney's appointed to when we actually got the victory and a 2-1 victory over Sheffield Wednesday. And uh, next up on Wednesday, we've got Blackburn Rovers and I'm joined by Dan from Rovers Chat. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for having us on as well. I'm looking forward to this Wednesday night. I can't beat a bit of midweek football. Yeah, under the lights, it tends to sort of bring out the uh, hostilities, doesn't it? Especially yeah. in the uh, winter months when it's cold and, you know, you're travelling a long distance. You just want those three points, don't you? And um, Blackburn are familiar opponents with Birmingham because we faced you guys four times last season, twice in the league and twice in the FA Cup as well. And uh, in that run, there was two wins for Blackburn, one win for Birmingham and a draw in between. So um, how would you sort of summarise those games last season, if you remember them, like coming up against Birmingham? Yeah, I think the home one actually when we won comes to mind a lot. I thought we obviously got battered. Uh, I actually went on a bit of an EFL podcast at the end of the season and I said Birmingham were one of the best sides we'd actually faced at home that year. I thought when you come to our place, you should have won, but our keeper in inspired form. Uh, the cup games were almost a blur playing them back to back and with transfer deadline day included. That kind of just went bad by a blur. And then I remember the 1 0 loss at your place when as it typically is, Reddick had just scored against us after a long spell. So, hmm. do you know what? They were all close games. Birmingham were probably one of the better sides we saw last year. I know it obviously maybe didn't transpire to every game you had, but uh, against us, the winner game when I walked and I thought, these are an easy opponents. The cup one went to extra time, the one at your place. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then oh, you I just scored late as well. Yeah, so hmm. a side that definitely had talent, a side that definitely tested us. Uh, I've not seen much here this year. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see how Wednesday goes. Mm. And um, I remember that game actually in October last season where um, we were all over you guys, but you guys came yeah. out with the win. And I remember Kaminsky had a fantastic game. Like literally just save after save. We're thinking, whatever we do today, it's just not going to work, is it? And um, Birmingham have a bit of a rotten record at Ewood Park, to be honest. We've got a long time since we've won there. I think it was 2013, 2014, the last time we beat you guys at Ewood Park. So it seems to be a bit of a... Um, bad hunting ground for us. But in terms of sort of this season, uh, start of the season, you're in 10th place at the moment. It tends to be that Blackburn don't really do draws, do they? There's only one draw this season. It took until uh, January last season to get a draw. So um, how do you evaluate the season so far? I think it's been a bit of what we expect, but the other way around, I mentioned just before we come on air, that Rovers are actually really good away at the moment, which I think we're on five wins away this season. We only won six in the all of last year and we've still got four away games before the year ends. So the chances are, by the time we get to New Year, we'll have probably at least won as many as we did last year uh, or last season. So we saw it's been strange. We've been poor at home. Uh, having a lot of the ball doesn't suit us. So I think therefore playing at home when you've got the expectation of the crowd on you to have a lot of the ball and play this football. But we've kind of suffered. It's been very strange in terms of looking really good away and going to away games being confident which I haven't for the last however many years I've been going away games whereas at home it's felt like the fortress Ewood that we've had for six or seven years where it's very rare we lose like that game last year away from home I think we lose that one that one that Kaminsky were incredible in so yeah it's been very strange in terms of the swapping round of results but overall we're about where I expected we'd be uh, some players have really impressed and kind of stepped up into the hole that were left by Bradley Dyke and Brereton Diaz last year, whereas we're still showing some signs of inconsist uh, inconsistency, which we kind of expected. So it's been a a season overall that I'd say is what we expected, but in terms of the home and away form, that's completely out of balance. Players have stepped up into the four that maybe we didn't expect before. So it's still been interesting, even if it's been predictable in terms of the league position. Mm. And you say there about sort of some of the big players that departed Blackburn. You've got Ben Brereton Diaz has gone to Villarreal. You've got a uh, Bradley Dat that sort of also departed as well, reunited with Tony Rober at Sunderland. And uh, in terms of the players that have sort of stepped up this season, you'd have to say one of them is Sammy Shbodix. You know, fantastic record in the championship so far, eleven goals in seventeen games. How would you say he's performed this season? Oh, it's been incredible, really. Uh, I think his record was six goals in this division before this year. So, you know, mm. we're already talking for him about to double it. I don't know when that'll be, but he's just been a revelation. I think he's benefited from, we haven't really got a number nine. So we kind of stepping in and being that number 10 who has to make the runs into the number nine area. So I think he benefits from that. But he's just really put himself in a position that, Look, you, he's an experienced player, our oldest player is 28, and I think Smodic is only 26, 27, so he's one of the more experienced heads. And he's just led by example. He's shown everyone that, look, I can do it at this level. 
I can step up, I can fill the hole that Bradley Dack left, which anyone who knows Bradley Dack over these years will know exactly how big he was to Blackburn Rovers. You know, we kind of forgot that we had Dak and forgot we had Brayton Diaz almost because Smodix has been this player that uh, that's really stepped up. I found, I found a stat out yesterday that he's got like the joint six best goals tally at this stage for the last 30 years that Rovers have had. So, and bearing in mind that Alan Shearer's probably got about eight of them goal tallies. So, really impressed by him, really impressed with where he's sitting. Uh, there's others as well. Sandre Tronstad came in in the summer from Vitesse in the uh, Eredivisie and he arrived to quite a lot of optimism. You know, he come from a club that are well-known, that play in Europe every year, even if it is the Conference League. Uh, he had 100 appearances in the Dutch League, which without doubt is a very good league. We've seen players move from the Dutch League to the Premier League, never mind the Championship. And although it took him time to get going, he's really found his feet. He seems to be the key midfielder now. You know, we've got, Rovers have got Adam Morton sat alongside him who was on the bench and Adam Morton's been talked about as being the next Alex Scott in the Championship. He's kept players like that out. He's kept Lewis Travis, a captain, out. He kept Joe Rankin Costello out at one point who were probably Rovers player of the year last year, which really shows how much he's come in. I think we found that the signings that have come in like James Hill on loan from Bournemouth, the winger uh, Andy Moran from Brighton, they've come in and they've not... I wouldn't say they filled the hole that players have left because they offer something different, but they've helped this side go from being, you know, if I take Moran and Hill out, I'd probably say we'd be sat 17th or 18th. So they've really given us that extra boost up. So hats off to the recruitment team, really, and hats off to Sammy Smoditz as well for really stepping up. Mm, absolutely. I think the recruitment's been fantastic at Blackburn this season. You sort of look at the players that are performing, the ones that you've said that have come into the squad and offered something different, really, like what you were saying. And um, I guess with the departures last summer and coming so close to getting into the playoff places, coming into this season, was sort of playoffs an expectation again because of the players you'd missed out on? Or was it a thing where sort of the players you'd lost out on, you'd gone, oh, OK, right, we'll settle for sort of mid-table? I think that was the feeling around the club that, Look, we could get the playoffs because we know what it's like. You've only got to win three games and you sat third in the table, aren't you? So I think it got in the mindset, and we are in this mindset this summer, of let's avoid any trouble whatsoever. Let's not even be in the discussion for any relegation battles or even get worried about being down there, which we're not going to be unless something catastrophic happens. But there were that inkling of could Rovers get the playoffs. We missed out on a striker this summer, and I think that would be the difference between us being content where we are now and us saying what we should be where Preston are. You know, without sounding like I'm being bitter to local rivals, I don't think we're any worse than Preston. So it shows that sides can get up there, but they've just got that striker that Rovers don't have. So I think people will tell you different aspirations. The club want to get out there. Look, we want to go for the top six. The manager wants to kind of say the same, doesn't he? Because you want people to come around. But for me, I think any anywhere between... 7th and 16th would probably be down as a decent year. If we can get up into that 7th to 10th bracket, then you're looking to next year thinking, all right, can we go out and get a striker? Can we go out and complement the young talent we already have? Because we're, I think we're the second youngest side in the league, so we need that experience. And that's probably the difference between Rovers being where we are now to being where Preston are. Mm, it's so many sort of things that combine to make a good championship team, isn't it? You need that experience in there and it tends to be that half the league want a striker, don't they, that can score goals. Yeah. And yeah, and I guess with the money they're costing nowadays, it's just so That's hard it. to get that player that can score all the goals or whatever. And you're always looking to someone up front to create that magic or whatever. But um, in terms of the manager, Yondel Thomason, what would you make of him so far? Because he's been at the club, what is it, like around 18 months now? And yeah. um, what would you say his sort of appointment's been like and as the fans sort of taken to him? Oh, he's absolutely loved by the fan base. He's really, he's coming to the club. It's hard to kind of describe Rovers from an outside perspective. We had all these years of really negative times where there were protests against the owners, rightly so, to be fair, at the time. Mm. Uh, and then we went down to League One. We come back up and Tony Mowbray took us from being this club that looked like we could go bust. I don't think that's an exaggeration to being on the cusp of the playoffs, but you never thought he'd get there. So we brought John Dal Thomason in, really an experienced manager, you know, 45 year old, which is absolutely nothing for a manager now. But he really come in and just revitalised the club. He's brought a playing style that's, I think it's attractive to fans. He speaks highly of the club. He's not afraid of saying what he thinks as well, which I think people enjoy. For me, he's been 
possibly the best appointment we could have made. This summer, we had a plan, we had a budget, everything was going well, and then something changed in India in terms of taxes, and the budget just went. And Rovers had to freeze all the transfer activity, and that's why we didn't get that strike. And now, for me, if we've got that strike, and we're now talking about Rovers going in the playoffs, you know, John Dahl's doing... I'd argue probably the best he can with his resources. Yes, we could get the pro, uh, we could get the playoffs and that'd be better. But for me, with the limit limited budget and the limited squad size, you know, we're a small squad. Given the fact we rely so heavy on the academy as well, I don't think you find many managers in this league that do better. He's got a massive future. I feel it's away from Rovers, unfortunately. Uh, probably, you know, in one of the higher uh, foreign leagues, but. He's just been a revelation and he's someone that if another club's looking for a manager, we always kind of go, oh, please don't come for him. Please don't come for him. And he kind of seems to just bypass it at the moment. But if he's not getting back, then ultimately we know he's going to end up going. Mm, and it's brilliant like that when you sort of get a, a manager that captivates a fan base and you, re- you think they really understand the club because we had that before the start of the season with John Eustace really where we thought that he was a manager you know that really understood the club got the fans or whatever obviously now we've gone in a different direction but to get someone sort of that age as you said you know sort of 45 now for a manager I mean managers seem to be getting younger and younger don't they so yeah. I suppose he's got a big career ahead of him and um, in terms of sort of Blackburn Birmingham sort of speaking about the fixture itself what are your main memories from the fixture sort of in the past, excluding like the last season or two? Have you got any memories that sort of date back years and years? Do you know what? I can't admit there's too many of the old <laughs> lost games. You know, there's yeah. not a uh, In terms of going to Birmingham, I don't think I've ever seen us win there, which kind of sums up uh, Rovers on the road. I just remember close games. You know, I know we had, I think we beat you 4 0 one year, but that was a Rovers side that were just in really good form at the time. They've mm. always been close games. There's not too many I remember, you know, which is which is quite bad actually. But <laughs> no, there's not too much there. We've both been in the championship for a while, haven't we? I remember um, yeah. I think it was last game of the season, COVID year, when um, you guys beat us, and it was just like you scored two worldies, like absolute worldies oh, against for... us. Oh no, Literally, that like, was... keeper had no that chance. Was... <laughs> Fans were in there, there. Yeah, I think there was like some fans, wasn't there, where it was like sort of they were phasing it in, weren't they? And then there was a few or whatever, but um, yeah, just scored absolute worldies against us. Yeah, Buckley and uh, Brereton Diaz. I forgot about that. Shows yeah. how, that shows how much that game remembered. I think that was more last game, actually, when they scored mm. them two goals. Yeah, I think it was them. So uh, I forgot about that. But no, not too many men other than them too. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a fixture that's been played quite a lot in sort of recent history, but um, looking forward to the game this Wednesday, um, what do you think, you know, the score's going to be and how do you think the game's going to pan out? Because with obviously Wayne Rooney now having his first win under his belt, you think the players would be a bit more confident going to somewhere like Ewood Park, but then again, Blackburn are a good sider in the top half of the table. So how do you see it panning out? I think it'll be quite an interesting battle. You'll be back well, numbers-wise, from what I've seen, which you don't get many times midweek. Maybe that will bring the atmosphere up a bit. But I feel this is going to be one of them rovers are under pressure to get a home win. We do really well on the road. We've been really poor at home. And ultimately, if you're not performing in front of your home fans, it then makes it a bit harder uh, to get people interested. I think it'll be a game that sees rovers... Not change tactics fully, but I think we'll just kind of calm the approach a bit. We'll try and be a bit more clever on the ball because, like I said, we're better counter-attacking. I think we'll try and be more clever. What we found in a few games this year is we played Sunderland at home midweek. Uh, who did we have for the last time? We had another midweek game at home. I can't remember who it was for the life of me, but Rovers went into it. We went all guns blazing for 20 minutes and we didn't score. And then I think we lost 3-1 against Sunderland. So... We could see Rovers come out and try and kill a game off in 20 minutes. That's what we've been trying all season to go 2 0 up, go 3 0 up, kill this game off, and then we can just sit there. You have to come and attack us. We go and attack you down the wings, and that's when we see the best. So I'm not sure how it'll go Wednesday. I'm, it's really strange. Normally, home games, I'm always like, yeah, Rovers will win that, Rovers will win this. With the way we are at the moment, I'm gonna go for a Rovers win on the back of that big win at Stoke against the side that I don't lost in five games. I'll go for two one Rovers. I hope it's not as nervy as last year because that really weren't good for the heart watching all them chances go near our goal again. But uh, yeah, we'll go two one. We'll go for 
Who should we have scoring? It's got to be Sammy Smoddix, and we'll go for Arno Sigurdsson to score as well. But I do think, and I'm not underestimating Birmingham anyway, it wouldn't shock me if you come out with three points. It really wouldn't give our home format. For once, I wish we were playing away. Mm, I mean, it's interesting hearing that from you, actually, because of the sort of record that Blackburn have got, not only against us, but at home as well, you know, in past years, as you said, they've got a really good record at Ewan Park and coming off the back of a 3-0 victory, I thought you'd be like buzzing, sort of like, you know, confident, say, yeah, we'll beat you guys. So looking at, well, looking at where we are in the league and that, but um, in, in terms of my perspective, I, I'd, I'd definitely take a point at Ewan Park. I think Blackburn are a decent side and I think that we'll score, but I think you guys will score as well. So I'm going to say a one all draw. Um, and I'm actually going to go with Jordan James scoring again. I feel like he'll start this game coming off the bench um, as he did sort of against Blackburn in the FA Cup at Ewood Park last season. And I can see, uh, yeah, Jordan James getting another goal. So I'm going to go over one all, and uh, you're going with a 2-1 down, aren't you? 2 Only because I can't back against, does it? It'd be, <laughs> it'd be wrong to say a draw. Yeah, um, well, it, it's shaping up to be a good game. And uh, thank you so much to Dan for uh, coming on to chat to us. Uh, if you want to sort of shout out any of your socials or what's happening on your channel at the moment. Yeah, if you want to find us, Rovers Chat on YouTube, uh, Rovers Chat underscore on Twitter X, whatever it's called now. Uh, just plenty of Rovers stuff. We'll have a full reaction to the game afterwards. It's an honest reaction. We're not deluded to think we're the best club in the world. We'll give the honest reactions. So come and check us out uh, before and after the game and we'll... Uh, Hopefully put a bit of enjoyable content out there, although I hope the reaction's not too enjoyable. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Dan. And uh, in terms of us, uh, hopefully we'll have the return of the podcast this week, sort of chatting about the recent games, chatting about Wednesday's game, chatting about the uh, victory against Sheffield Wednesday. And uh, hopefully we've got some more content coming out for you guys soon. So, uh, yeah, if you like the video, be sure to uh, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, and most importantly, keep right on.